Hi, good morning guys, it's Wave618. It's the 4th of April 2019 and we're at 10 a.m. GMT or BST now. Um, so we're gonna do an update on Bitcoin today, some very nice overnight price action. And so this price action has in fact shown some bearish resilience and shows that they do still have a foot in this market. So um, that's why I've left on my corrective count here as my default count. And that's what we're going to be addressing in this video, whether, you know, I'm going to explain how the bears have shown an element of control here. And I'm going to give an Elliott Wave explanation as to why we might be finding resistance at this level. All right, so that's what we can look forward to in this video. Stay tuned. Okay guys, so, right, first thing I want to mention, so in yesterday's video I mentioned this level, so it should be at 4979 this level, um, it was a very very key level, I was waiting to see what the daily close would be, so let's zoom in and see how we closed. All right, hovering over the candle, you can see at the top it says the close 4978.23. So you can't get much closer than that. Yeah, it's pretty much at the line. Um, so, but yeah, obviously it's very, very slightly below, which for me is significant. It means that the bears managed to at least drive price to below this level before the day closed. And for me, that is significant. And just to go off, the reason that we were looking at that line is obviously it's the top of this order block. So this was one big order block here that preceded this huge move up. This is where the orders were placed for this move up. And, and that's why whenever price hits this line, it's considered a significant price level. So now I want to give an Elliott Wave explanation for the correction. Yesterday in my video, I was talking about this being our first wave up to here. And then it talks about this being the X wave. And so we extend our Y wave from the bottom of X, which came to here. And I said that, you know, we reached the 1.618. Okay. Uh, and I said, because of that, I really wanted to see price start to come down, especially considering it was the 3rd of April. So the 3rd of any month, as I mentioned, check back over the last year, <clears throat> the 3rd to the, maybe the 6th of each month is typically the shakeout week. And it's where price often reverses. It's the first week following the CME expiry, the CME futures contracts expiry. So it's a shakeout week prior to the trend for the following month. Um, doesn't always occur, but it's a uh, a pretty a good pattern that I've seen happening. Um, so as you can see, what we've seen so far with a big wick to the upside here on the day on the you know, on the daily here. So that for, certainly supports the fact that we could be reversing at this level. All right. Now, what I want to mention is there is a, perhaps a better Elliott Wave count that I looked at, and I posted it on Twitter uh, yesterday evening. Um, and I think, yeah, it's, it's probably a preferred count, actually, and it's where X actually finishes here. And the reason for this, for me, this was looking very corrective that's seven waves up if you ask me that's one two three four five six seven so we had a correction and a correction and then i could see three waves down three three waves up three and uh, three slight waves down three for me this was all looking very converging type price action and uh, we're seeing lots of three wave counts following one another and when you see that you should really think about a possible triangle and so that's the way I would probably label it as a ascending triangle with A, B, C, D, and E. Yeah, the tops are pretty pretty close around this level and you can see the, the lows are getting higher. So it's an ascending triangle. And the reason this is significant is if we just plot our Fib extension now for the Y wave. So if W comes up to here, X finishes at this point 
got to be careful we get the bottom of x here. So we come up to around the 1.382, which for a WXY, that's a very you know classical finding, whether it's the 1.236 or 1.382. I'm a lot happier with that as a correction rather than us reaching the 1.618. So as soon as you go into the realms of the 1.618, you're thinking wave three, really. Uh, so as in you're looking at an impulse wave, if the, th if the third wave is a 1.618 extension of the first wave, you should really be thinking along the lines of an impulse uh, rather than a correction. So for looking at it from a corrective point of view, I would prefer this count. And the other thing that supports this is there was a nice pitchfork. So we'll just take this off for a moment. Oh no, we'll leave it on. And yeah, let's put a pitchfork. So first pivot here at the bottom. <clears throat> Second pivot at the end of W. Third pivot at the end of X. Okay, shift pitchfork this one, yeah. And shift pitchforks are typically used for corrective price action. Um, whilst you use an original pitchfork for more impulsive price action. So here you can see um yeah with your shift pitchfork we found resistance at the upper median line of course we we went through it and i've mentioned many many times pitchforks are not buy and sell signals they're merely showing you the trend and so really you should be looking for where candles major candles close in relation to the pitchfork yeah you can't just say price has hit this line we're going lower you can't just say we've broken through this line we're going higher you want to look for major candle closes above or below the pitchfork to get a sense of the overall sentiment. That's how I would use them. <coughs> so basically, we got our daily close below this upper median line. Again, another show of control for the for the bears. So we fi finished below this median line, uh, upper median line, and also below this 4979 level, which are our horizontal support resistance level. Um, so yeah, just wanted to explain this in a bit more detail because there's only so much you can write on Twitter. Um, so yeah, there's quite a bit to say here. So this is why I would probably use this count as my preferred corrective count. Now, of course, you've got the two waves come in here and you can argue this could be a wave one and this could all be a wave two. And now I know loads of people are going to say, because in my last video, people mentioned it, not my last one, the one before, when I talked about dash, uh, they said you can't have a, wave, uh, a triangle in a wave two. So just to address that, yes, you can have a triangle in a wave two. They're not as common. It's not what you usually expect. You usually get an ABC zigzag, a rather deep retracement. Um, but yes, you can have a triangle. There is no Elliott wave rule to say you can't have a triangle in wave two. Uh, but yes, you are right to think that they are a lot more common in wave four uh, because in Classically, wave fours, you know, last longer, um, and the, yeah, the more drawn out and more corrective, and don't usually retrace as deep as a wave two in relation to the preceding impulse. Um, but yeah, you could argue that because we've seen a triangle, it's more likely to be part of a corrective pattern than an impulse. Yeah, that's a fair argument because uh, obviously, if we've got a triangle, probability-wise. It's less likely to be a wave two. Um, however, that said, you can't rule it out, okay? But for me, I think it's more in keeping with the corrective pattern, um, just because we've hit this pitch for, we've closed below our uh, 4979, and yeah, sure, triangles are much more common in an X wave rather than a wave two. So that's the justification for that. Um, now, what happens next? Okay, so supposing we're bearish, third of, 3rd of April was our, our pivotal day, and we're gonna come down. So first of all, always be mindful. If you've got a WXY, you can always have a WXYXZ, okay? So you could have an X and then a Z coming higher, could test our 5800 level where the, we discussed yesterday is a lot of um, horizontal resistance at that level. So that's possible. For example, we could come down, test these highs, 4,200 roughly, or we might just come to around 4,300, which was the 
0.786 fib all the way down from twenty thousand um, dollars so that's possible um, and for me if I were to put any shorts basically zooming in now I'd want to be on the south side of this line the 4979 because this is a very pivotal support and resistance level you can see price hovers around it you know found resistance here broke through came down found resistance again then a little bit of support came down and now we're, it's acting as support for quite a while as I say to put on any short I'd wait for price to come down retest before going short um, and then for any short I would be very mindful of the possibility of a WXYXZ there, that doesn't need to occur it's just something to be mindful of yeah in terms of where that if it were a WXYXZ there's a bit of horizontal support at this level around here so that's even at 45.70 another line to be mindful of the median line okay when we come down so that this is certainly where we could find an x wave coming down to so it might not come down to even 4300 4200 if we were to see an x wave it may just come down to <clears throat> the median line these are certainly lines that i'd be looking at. when you see a correction typically uh, price action will be bouncing off these median lines within the pitchfork in particular the shift pitchfork um, so median line if that breaks look for the lower median line yeah but it would be these lines that are significant as well as your order box for example here we've got this high here and then clear support around this level 4160 um, yeah so those are the things I'll be looking out for and if just to talk about the potential bullish scenario which as I say, I'm still, my default position is that this is still a, a corrective pattern and will come down further. But supposing it was bullish, supposing this was a one, two, three, then we can turn this into a original pitchfork. And you can see we've tested the median line. Yeah. But then this is only a 1.382 extension of the first wave so that's not typical for a wave 3 so you would expect this to come much higher um, unless of course you're calling this wave 1 this wave 2 and this wave 3 up to here but what I don't like about that is that this is 7 waves up and if this is wave 1 of a wave 3 then why is it 7 waves 7 waves is typically a double zigzag which is a corrective formation so that, that I don't like the look of that <clears throat> on top of that there was falling volume throughout this pattern if we bring on volume yeah you can see um, bring up the daily so following the bottom here price continues to fall, uh, not price, volume falls all the way down to the point that we see this breakout here okay supposing this was the start of the wave 3 you'd expect some higher volume to come in here but in fact it wait until, until the breakout so it's all sounding for me there's no reason to give up on the fact that this is still in a bear market and this is just a corrective pattern here um, and I wouldn't use this pitchfork, I would use the shift because that's more in keeping with a corrective uh, price action. <clears throat> so I hope that gives you a bit more guidance on what my thoughts are at present. Um, as I say, I would not be surprised for price to come down from here. <coughs> I would be mindful of the potential of a WXYXZ and so would be taking profits when we test this median line um, and in terms of where I put shorts on I would certainly wait for price to come down below 4979 and a small retest on a short time frame such as the 15 minute chart before placing any such positions um, and oh yeah just on the, the topic of volume 
So we can see here, th this spike in volume here is almost equal to this huge breakout volume here. Okay. And this volume is coinciding with the move down. Okay. With that move down. Um, so yeah, certainly that's bearish volume that's come in here and it's almost equivalent to the, the high impact volume that um, related to this huge breakout here. All right, so yeah, I think that will wrap it up. Actually, one more thing I'll mention, one more thing. Um, back on our daily, obviously, there's a million one ways Elliott Wave can play out. This could all be, obviously, if we're going to call this W, X, Y, X, Z coming down further, the alternative is this X may no, not have finished. Uh, it could be a lot more drawn out. That's another possibility. So we could have a W. So these three waves is just W. And we could have an X. And then we could have a, a Y up to our 5800, something like that. And then we could have our final Z wave down. That's just another possibility. As I say, with Elliott Wave, there's numerous possibilities. At present, we need more price action to determine. But short term, what I'm looking at is price to come below 4979. Perhaps put on a short. I'll decide when more price action comes in, whether I like the look of that trade or not. And I'd be taking profits at the median line. That's um, one definite indicator for me where I'd be taking profits. But obviously, I'd be looking at horizontal um, support based on higher time frame uh, order blocks. So for example, what's that one there? 45.40. Yeah, possibly somewhere around there. But uh, yeah, I think we'll wrap it up there, guys. Just wanted to update you with that. If you found value in the content, please leave a like, leave a comment if you've got any queries and take care. Thank you.